Good morning to everyone. Today is the second day of our uh, advanced modeling and simulation for engineering five days workshop at NIT Pondicherry. We are having the hybrid mode, so we are uh, all the offline participants are arrived the position, and uh, we hope uh, offline online position online participants also will join uh, join us later. So in this uh, warm welcome, I am uh, introducing Dr. N. J. Prakash. Sir has started his career from uh, CIT, then slowly he upgraded himself. He went abroad. He did his master degree. Uh, PhD as well as postdoctoral fellowship from the foreign university. Currently, Sar is working in the School of Mechanical and Electrical Engineering, China Institute of Mining and Technology, China. Sar has published repeated articles in the various journals and the various domains with the laser gliding, laser processing, and other material related works uh, in connection with welding. And uh, Sar has contributed the uh, various uh, book chapters, and now recently also he is. Uh, uh, going to perform one more book uh, again is uh, Springers. Sarah has attended so many uh, national international conferences, as well as he is also going to organize uh, some of the international conference and in upcoming days. If interested participant may be joined with him in later. So in this uh, short introduction, I am now uh, welcoming Dr. N. Jem Prakash for delivering the uh, lectures. Oh, thank you, Dr. Karpagraj. Uh, good morning to everyone. So uh, in this session, uh, we will see about the laser surface engineering and their uh, tribological applications. Uh, in this, uh, in our engineering field, we are facing uh, so many issues uh, like uh, uh, wear kind of issues, uh, corrosion issues, uh, some kind of uh, uh, damages on the mechanical and automobile components. Uh, how we are uh, facing this kind of issues and uh, how we are doing the surface engineering uh, on this uh, kind of uh, products. In this way, how we are using the lasers uh, to rectify this kind of issues. Uh, in the same way, uh, how the efficiency of uh, mechanical properties and uh, tribological properties are improving. Uh, these are the major agenda, major points we are going to discuss uh, in this seminar. The introduction about the tribology, coatings, and uh, the properties. Uh, then how we are using the lasers in uh, surface engineering. Uh, then we are going to see about uh, three different uh, practical study, uh, which we have done earlier in our uh, research work. Uh, then finally, the conclusions. The introduction. In this uh, tribology, uh, we know uh, what is meant by tribology. Uh, it is the science of wear, friction, and uh, lubrication, and uh, encompasses how the two products are interacting surfaces and uh, other tribal elements behave in a relative motion in natural and also artificial systems. So when the two components are uh, matting each other, how the friction and uh, wear and uh, lubrication behavior to uh, study about this is called the tribology. Uh, now, in our mechanical industries, uh, automotive industries, we know that commonly we are using uh, nickel alloys, titanium, stainless steel, cast iron, and also aluminum alloys. So these are the major alloys we are using in our uh, mechanical industries. When we are using these kind of alloys, uh, we are facing some issues. Uh, those alloys undergo failure in service condition due to long run usage. In this situation, the life and the performance of the components will be decreased due to some form of wear or any kind of uh, corrosions, erosions, uh, or fatigue damages. So uh, it is necessary to forecast the failure in advance. Otherwise, the material removal may increase and uh, the sudden failure will happen. So the entire uh, plant will be uh, shut down. So we need to predict the failure well in advance so that we can rectify the issues uh, as well as uh, the plant will be work effectively. So here, 
we can see some uh, damaged components in the top uh, image. We can see the damaged camshaft images. Uh, in the bottom image, you can see uh, the damaged bearings. In the left hand uh, side, you can see without any damages. In the same image, you can see the right side, some damages are there in the bearing component. Then in these images, you can see the gas turbine blades. Uh, there are a lot of corrosion, oxidation, and fatigue kind of uh, issues. So this, uh, these kind of uh, problems are happening due to high temperature corrosion and uh, fatigue erosion. And you can see some uh, damaged aero engine uh, blades due to the oxidation process. Also, here you can see the forced draft fan blade in coal-fired power plant. So here you can see uh, some kind of uh, corrosion and the erosion type of uh, issues, which will happen in the coal-fired uh, power plants. So now uh, we need a solution. Uh, how we can provide the solution? The simply, the first option is uh, buy the new component. Everyone can do this kind of uh, things. But as an engineer, as a mechanical engineer, we need to know how to uh, rectify these kind of uh, issues or uh, damages. So in this way, uh, we are proposing the coating technology. The coating technology, why we need coatings. So for doing the surface engineering, uh, we are using the coating process. By doing the coating process, we reduce the wear and uh, as well as the friction. Uh, in uh, surface engineering, we can do only without uh, coatings and with coatings. Uh, with coatings, we can alter the surface chemistries and we can change the roughness of the components and also we can improve the hardness of the surface layers. So why we need this kind of coatings? Uh, because, you know, the mechanical components need higher and higher performance. And also the use of coatings can improve the performance of uh, surface regions and it will reduce the friction and it will improve the wear properties and the corrosion properties. And also some uh, special atmosphere, we can take uh, the devices and the bearing systems in space mechanisms operating under near vacuum conditions, as well as the engineering components in aero turbine running under corrosive or erosive conditions. So these kind of components definitely needed some kind of coatings. Uh, so without coatings, they cannot uh, provide the uh, good performance in these components. So the, definitely we need some coatings to improve the mechanical and the tribological properties. So these are the coating types and the structures. The different types of coatings are successfully developed in 1950s, especially during the last two decades. Last two decades. The mostly the coating methods are classified depends on the three, uh, uh, three or four methods: uh, the gaseous solution, molten, or semi-molten state. Uh, you can see here the surface coating methods. Uh, classified as a three different, major three different, the one is uh, gases. Under this, uh, we can see the chemical vapor deposition, physical vapor deposition is all is coming under the plasma variants. Then the solution state. In this also, there are different kind of uh, coating, like uh, chemical reduction, electrolysis deposition, chemical conversions. In the third one, uh, the molten and semi-molten state. In this, uh, our uh, laser kind of uh, deposition source uh, coming. And this, the coatings are commonly classified as uh, soft coating and uh, hard coatings. So according to the hardness, lower or higher than 10 gigapascal, because the hardness is uh, generally considered as the most important parameter for the tribological responses of the coating systems. In soft coatings, such as polymers, uh, soft metals, uh, this kind of oxides, carbides, nitrates, this kind of uh, uh, carbon-based compositions are believed with good wear resistance. In this, when your coating is thick enough, 
it will support the whole load and work like a bulk materials. So the coating will act as one of the primary thing in the tribological uh, response. So after coating, the how the coating will help to improve the tribological responses. The first one, it uh, definitely it will reduce the friction and it will increase the wear resistance. So now the lasers, how we are connecting the lasers into surface engineering. The one is uh, surface heating for transformation hardening or annealing. The second one, surface melting for homogeneation and microstructure refinement purpose. The third one, surface alloying for improvement of corrosive and wear applications. The fourth one is uh, like a surface gladding for a similar reasons, this also we use for improving the corrosion and uh, wear kind of applications. The fifth one is uh, surface uh, texturings. Okay, now we will see one by one uh, how the surface heating, surface melting, alloying, and the gladdings are working. The laser hardening, uh, as we know that this laser hardening is a method aimed at improving the component wear behavior. During the laser hardening, also uh, is known as the surface layer hardening, the energy from the laser beam is applied directly to the component surface. So you can see some kind of uh, videos which can provide the detailed view of laser hardening. Yeah, the second one is the laser surface melting. So in this, uh, it involves heating the surface of the substrate to its melting point to cause it to melt and subsequent rapid solidification to refine the surface microstructure. Then the laser surface alloying uh, is a material processing method that utilizes the high power density available from the focused laser source to metal coatings and a portion of the underlying substrate. So in this, uh, we will apply some kind of alloy powders on the uh, substrate. Then we will uh, apply the laser source and it will intermix the powder with the substrate portions. So we will see this later in detail in the practical study.
Yeah, then the laser gliding, it's a surface modification process in which a laser beam is used to melt on the additional material and incorporate it onto the substrate by the development of a thin mutual dilution bonding layer. Actually, in laser alloying and laser gliding, the both are a different process. In laser alloying, the alloy powders are depositing, the pre-placed on the substrate materials then the laser source will be passing on the alloy powders the alloy powders will be penetrated it will be intermixed with the substrate material but when you come into the laser gliding the alloy powders will be deposited on the substrate material so there is no any intermixing or there is no any penetration of alloy powder into the uh, substrate material in the laser gliding. So these are the major difference between the laser alloying and the laser gliding. The addition alloy may be introduced into the beam material interaction soon, either prior or uh, during the processing in the laser gliding. So in laser gliding, the another one, it will be a thick layer of the addition material preserves its initial solid properties. And only a thin layer is minimally alloyed to the substrate for adherence purpose. But in laser alloying, the all the alloy powders, it will be intermixed with the substrate. So these are the major difference between the laser gliding and the laser alloying. Then uh, the process must be clearly differentiated from the alloying and the gliding. So we can see the laser uh, gliding process. Yes, uh, the, finally, the fifth one, laser surface texturing. Uh, this kind of uh, texturing uh, process that alters the material surface properties by modifying its uh, texture and uh, roughness. In this texturing process, the laser beam creates the micro patterns on the surface through the laser ablation and uh, removing the layers with the micrometer precision and the perfect repeatability. The typical patterns, which includes uh, dimples, grooves, uh, any kind of uh, forms. We can make some uh, splines or straight lines or any square form or a rectangular or elliptical. So the uh, the patterns will be free forms as we like. We can make it. So in this, the 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 material will be uh, ablated through the laser source and it will make the micro patterns. So we can see some kind of uh, laser texturing.
Yeah, uh, now uh, we have done uh, the coating process and uh, the surface engineering. Now uh, we need to evaluate uh, the coating performance. How the coating performance are improved uh, when it is uh, compared with the previous one without the coating. So we can uh, analyze the microstructure modification and the hardness improvement and the tribological studies we can uh, do by using the pin on disc or a roller and a roller or corrosion test or erosion test. And finally, the worn out surface and roughness analysis. In this way, we can evaluate the coating performance. So now we come into the practical study. Uh, the, there are three different practical study. In this, uh, the first practical study will explain about the laser alloying. The second one, we take uh, two different processing. The one is laser melting. The another one is a laser alloying. The third one is a laser gladding. So first we will come into the laser alloying practical study. In this uh, practical study, uh, we have taken the nodular cast iron materials, which we know uh, this material uh, mainly using in the automotive industry, especially for making the camshaft. We are using this kind of uh, materials. And also this uh, nodular iron is a low cost material and uh, has a good mechanical properties and a good castabilities. The usage of material also is increasing in the automotive industries. And uh, these are the properties of the nodular iron, the hardness, tensile strength, the melting point is around uh, 1200 degrees Celsius, then the thermal conductivity. The application of this nodular iron in the automotive industry, the camshaft, crankshaft, the cylinder heads, and also the nodular cast iron roll for hot rolling mills. Uh, in this nodular iron, uh, we have some uh, difficulties, like we have seen the before uh, in the camshaft and the crankshaft. So some damages are happening due to the continuous working conditions. So in this, here we have taken two different alloy powders. The one is uh, WC12CO, the another one chromium carbide 25 nickel chromium uh, alloy powders. These both the powders are commercially available in the market. Uh, these both powders are having the good wear resistance properties. So due to the superior hardness and wear resistance property, these both alloy powders we have selected uh, for making the coating process. We can see the FESM images of as received alloy powders, uh, WC12CO and uh, chromium carbide nickel chromium alloy powders. And uh, here we have done the pre-placed coatings. Uh, actually, this kind of coatings is uh, uh, very effective for the research purpose. We no need to contact any industries to do the cladding or coating this kind of it will make some another uh, issues and uh, also it will be expenses but if you come for the pre-placed coating it will be very effective for our uh, research purpose and also it, the procedure is very simple in this we have taken the polyvinyl alcohol uh, and this pva were mixed with deionized water and we heated up to 320 degrees celsius after that, the alloy powder was mixed with PVA and it will be magnetically stirred for uh, almost two to three hours to make a thick, thick paste and also it will mix the alloy powder together. Then the, alloy, the, then the mixed alloy powder will be taken and it will be evenly coated, e evenly pre-placed on the base material surface to required th thickness. And after that, we need to keep that uh, specimens in the fume cupboard for two, two to three days uh, to dry the coating layers. You can see the pre-placed coating uh, setup. Uh, the defined thickness of powder, we can do the pre-placed using the binder. The laser melt the powder to form the strong coating over the substrate. The advantages of this pre-placed coating is uh, cost effective and a very less amount of powder is required. Uh, the procedure is very simple and also it can be used for testing purpose, especially uh, for research scholars, uh, for any uh, re researchers, we can do this kind of uh, pre-placed coatings. 
Then uh, we have done the laser surface alloying, the metal surfacing process using the laser beam. The prior to laser surface alloying, the coating powder is deposited on the base material. The coating material and the substrates are targeted by the laser beam. The laser beam fuses or alloys those two materials together. So this is called the laser surface alloying. The pre-placed alloy powders will be fused by using the laser source. When it is fusing the alloy powders, it will intermix with the substrate materials to some particular depth. Uh, then the advantages of this laser surface alloying, it is very good metallurgical bonding and also the thermal distortion is very less when compared with uh, other processing. And these are the laser surface treatment setup. The robot will have the five axis and also one more axis with the rotary tables and the argon supply uh, settings and the computer is connected with the robo robot. Uh, these are the laser surface treatment which we have here. And the LSE process, the laser surface alloying process. In this, the laser beam was a raster scanned over the pre-placed surface to melt and fuse the alloy powders with the substrate. During the laser scanning, the alloy powder was melted together with the base material for some micron depth and alloyed. During the laser processing, the PVA binter will be evaporated due to the higher temperatures because the PVA can withstand up to 250 to 300 degrees Celsius. But our laser source will be very high temperatures. During this time, the PVA powders will be evaporated only the alloy powder will be intermixed with the substrate materials. The samples were irradiated under argon atmosphere to avoid the uh, external uh, contamination purpose. The samples were exposed to a continuous wave uh, laser surface alloying and the optimum values were chosen based on the defect free, uh, crack free or pores free. Uh, without any defects, uh, we have selected uh, this kind of uh, laser parameters. The power, scanning speed, overlapping ratio, defocuses, the interaction time. The finally, we calculated the energy density. So these are the major laser parameters we have optimized for this experimental work. And these are the laser surface alloying laser setup, the OBI uh, fiber optic laser. Uh, it has a uh, three kilowatt uh, uh, continuous wave and also we can operate this laser in pulsed mo mode. The wavelength of laser is uh, 1080 nanometers. And these are the parameters uh, we have uh, considered while optimizing the laser, uh, laser alloying, the power density, the interaction time and the energy density. So these are the major uh, parameters we considered during the laser alloying process. So after that, we gone for the wear testings. The sliding wear test was conducted at high temperature. The load, sliding velocity, and the temperature with the constant sliding distance of 1,000 or 2,000 meters we can use for the uh, sliding distance. Then finally, the wear rate uh, and the coefficient of friction are calculated through these wear testings. So these are the wear testing machines which we have. And uh, through the wear testing, so the volume loss, the wear rate and the CYF was recorded on the computer and uh, we can process those data so to get this. This, we can see in this FESM images of a nodular cast iron. This has received, uh, has received cast iron. So in these images, we can see the microstructure consists of graphite nodules surrounded with ferrite. These nodules with the maximum diameter of about 60 micrometers. So in the second one, this is the microstructure of a laser alloyed surface. In this, the left-hand side 
optical images is showing the WC12CO alloyed specimen. The left hand, uh, the, sorry, the right hand side images are showing the chromium carbide nickel chromium alloyed specimens. In this, you can see the cross section of the alloyed surface was free from the defects uh, such as micro cracks and beads. And also, the graphite nodules, uh, which we have seen in the previous images, the graphite nodules were completely dissolved in this uh, laser processed specimens. And also the high cooling rate creates the fine cellular dendrite structures in the both specimens. And also you can see the micro hardness of the specimens. When you compare with these base metals, uh, the base metal is uh, so around 220 uh, micro hardness when we apply the 300 grams of load. But when you come into the laser surface alloying, the tungsten carbide with 12% cobalt mixed this uh, laser alloyed specimen shows around 1200. We can see how how much difference it is almost five times four to five times or higher when we do the laser surface alloying process with this alloy and also when you come into the chromium carbide 25 percent nickel chromium alloy it shows around 900 micro hardness values when we apply for 300 grams of load so it, this also is almost three times higher than the base material hardness and the EDS elemental mappings also confirmed the necessary elements which is presented in the laser alloyed specimens. After that, after the wear testings, we can see the worn out topography of uh, base materials. In this, uh, without any coatings, without any laser treatment, you can see the untreated nodular cast iron surface shows heavy material loss, heavy material loss while compared with laser alloyed surface. Uh, here the adhesion and the scooping might have occurred which hindered the motion between the pin and the disc due to the lower hardness. Therefore, the wear rate and the COF, the coefficient of friction was uh, very higher in these base materials. At the same time, when you come into the laser alloyed specimens, you can see the images A is shows the a very less worn out, uh, very less uh, scratches. Uh, it is uh, slightly scratched when compared with the base materials. You can see the A image, image A is the uh, tungsten carbide with 12% cobalt alloyed specimen. Uh, the B images are showing uh, the B images are indicating chromium carbide and 25% nickel chromium alloyed specimens. Uh, you can see in the both images, the surface got slightly scratched when compared to the base materials. The laser surface alloying showed very lower material loss due to the deposition of the harder alloy powders. And also the finer groove marks were visible and indicated lower material loss from the laser surface alloyed specimens. This kind of uh, very less material loss due to the elongated eutectic carbides, which resulted in higher hardness of laser alloyed specimens. In this, the harder uh, tungsten carbide with 12% cobalt and chromium carbide 25% nickel chromium alloyed surface improved the strength against the abrasion and enhanced the wear resistance. Also, we have measured the roughness uh, through the white light interferometer. You can see the top image, uh, the image A, is shows very higher roughness because uh, the material loss on the worn out surface is very high on the untreated specimen. So the same reflected here also. The surface roughness of the untreated specimen is shows around 8.7 micrometer. Uh, this was attributed to higher wear rate and lower substrate hardness. Due to this, the 
roughness, uh, the roughness of the worn out surface uh, was about 8 points on micrometer. And when you come into the laser allied surface, uh, figure B and figure C, it shows the roughness of 1.6 micrometer and 2.7 micrometer. Because in this, uh, the lower wear rate was happened and also the material hardness was improved after the laser alloying process. Then, when comparing with untreated specimen, the laser alloyed specimen exhibited 5.5 and 3 times reduction in the surface roughness. Then uh, we come into the example 2. In example 2, here also we have taken the nodular cast iron materials and the coating material is nickel chromium. But here we have taken uh, two methods. Uh, the one is laser surface melting. In this, without adding any alloy powders, just we are melting the surface and we are comparing with uh, laser alloying, laser surface alloying. Uh, for laser alloying purpose, uh, here we have taken nickel chromium powders. You can see the uh, the same morphology of the powders, nickel chromium morphologies of powders. And these are the experimental setup we have used for the alloying and the melting process. And these are the pre-placed coating cross-section images. At the same, the base material microstructures, we can see uh, before the treatment, so there are uh, the graphite nodules. We can see the pearlite ferrites in the images. The after the laser treatment, laser surface alloying, the microstructure you can see how it is changed. The laser alloyed cross sections. Uh, it's the laser alloyed regions shows with the dendrite structures, and also the micrograph of elemental. Uh, this shows the necessary elements. And these are the uh, treatment after the laser alloying with the nickel chromium alloy powders. Then in these microstructures, you can see uh, just we are doing the laser surface meltings. After the melting process, you can see the uh, microstructures with uh, dendrite uh, structures. And also you can see in the intersection, uh, intersection of uh, substrate and the uh, melting area, you can see some partially melted nodules. So, which is not melted completely due to improper powders, uh, improper powers. Then you can uh, see the hardness values after the treatment. As we know, the base hardness of the nodular cast iron was uh, 220 when we apply the 300 grams of load. But uh, here, after the laser alloying process, the hardness was improved around 550 uh, micro hardness when we apply 300 grams of load. At the same time, when we do the laser surface melting, the hardness was improved almost 850, 850 HV when we apply uh, 300 grams of load. So this also, I think almost, uh, double the time and triple the time the hardness was improved after the laser uh, treatments. Uh, here you can see the mass loss and uh, coefficient of uh, frictions. Uh, in the red color uh, graph is indicates the base metal. The blue one is indicates the laser surface alloying. The green one is laser melting. Just without any alloy powders, we melted uh, laser by using the lasers. Here, you can see the base metal mass loss. It was around 450 milligrams. But when you come into the laser surface alloying, it is almost uh, 150, 150 milligrams of material loss was happened. At the same time, when you come into the laser surface melting, still the material loss of the specimen is reduced. It is almost 70 or 75 milligrams was happened when compared with 
base material this is a very very less material loss and also uh, the both laser process the specimens you can see uh, the laser surface alloying or uh, laser surface melting the both the specimens uh, shows the very less material loss when compared with the base material the same way the coefficient of friction also uh, reflected in the graph uh, the base metal shows a higher friction when compared with the laser alloyed uh, laser alloyed and laser melted specimens in this the laser surface melted specimen shows the very lower coefficient of friction which is showing around 0.42 uh, something and uh, the worn out surface analysis you can see the worn out surface analysis the figure a b and c the figure A is uh, indicating the base metals uh, without any laser treatments. So here you can see the material loss is very heavy when compared with uh, laser processed specimens. And also you can see the images B. The image B is showed uh, some a little reasonable material loss when compared with the figure C. The figure C is a laser melted specimen. In this, you can see very, very few materials, very few uh, debris you can see, and also very finer uh, grooves you can see. Uh, there is no any heavy material loss as we get from the substrate and uh, uh, laser alloyed specimens. So this kind of uh, material uh, loss happened due to the lesser hardness on the substrate material but however when we come into the laser melted specimen the hardness was improved al almost three times better than the substrate materials so that here the wear resistance also was improved you can see the roughness measurement uh, the images a is showing the substrate uh, roughness measurement after the wear test and figure B shows the laser alloyed specimen surface measurement. And figure C shows the laser melted specimen uh, surface roughness. You can see the figure A shows very high roughness due to higher material loss. When you come into the figure C, it shows the less roughness because of the material loss is very less when compared with the base materials. Now uh, we come into the example three. In this, uh, we have taken two different alloy powders. The one is uh, Inconel 625. The another one is a Colmoni 5 powders. The both are from uh, nickel-based uh, alloy powders. Here, the process we have taken as a laser gladding. The base metal is uh, titanium alloys. You can see the uh, Powders. The figure A is the Inconel 625 alloy powders. The figure B shows the Colmonify alloy powders. You can see the laser gladding and uh, specimens. So these are the specimens we have done uh, by using the laser gladding process. Here you can see the microstructure after the laser gladding process. The cross-sectional uh, OM images shows the three different regions uh, which can show the gladding lower region, uh, gladding center, and the gladding top regions. The All the three regions are showing some different uh, structures. Uh, here we have taken the glad center regions. The magnified view of B show the gladding center regions. And then the microstructure after the laser gladding with a Colmoni 5 powder particles. So in these powder particles, you can see the, how the structures were changed with the interdendric structures. Uh, here also the, the region of the coatings uh, is with the different regions like the lower region, center region, and the top regions, which shows some uh, different uh, structures. 
here you can see the hardness measurement of these uh, both coatings the substrate specimen source is almost 300 to 350 uh, hv when compared uh, when we apply 300 grams of load but uh, in in conal 625 specimen it shows almost around 600 hv when we apply for 300 grams of load at the same time when you come into the colmoni 5 colmoni 5 alloy powder alloy powder it shows almost 900 hv when we apply 300 grams of uh, load so in this way we can see almost uh, two times three times or higher hardness we achieved when we using the when we are using the inconal 625 and the colmoni 5 alloy powders at the same time we can see the wear and uh, friction behavior uh, in this, the substrate, we can see the very heavy material loss wa was happened when we do the wear testings. It is almost 2.4 grams of material was lost on the substrate materials. But when you come into the inconal 625 allied specimen, uh, laser gladded specimen, the material loss was almost 0.6. 0.6 grams of material loss on the inconal 6 to 5 specimen. But when you come into the colmoni 5, colmoni 5 uh, usually has a higher hardness when compared with the inconal 6 to 5. So the same way it was uh, reflected here, it shows below 0.5 grams of material loss on the inconal, sorry, on the colmoni 5 allied particles. So this is almost a very uh, big difference when compared with uh, base materials and also you can see uh, the coefficient of friction uh, the same is uh, reflected into the uh, frictional force the base material source is almost uh, 0 0.6 point, 0 0.65 0 0.65 frictional force but when you compared with laser gladded specimens uh, the colmoni 5 gladding specimen shows almost 0.5 uh, frictional force values. So based on the hardness and based on the mass loss, the same also is reflected in the frictional force. And the worn out surface morphologies after the wear test, the images A shows the substrate and B images showing the inconal 6 to 5 uh, gladded specimens. The image C shows the colmoni 5 gladded specimens. So here we can see the figure A is a source very high material loss and also you can see some uh, material plucking also was uh, happened in these uh, specimens and also some uh, higher uh, debris and uh, big tracks and grooves, there are uh, many damages uh, we can observe on the substrate specimens. But when you come into the inconal 625 worn out specimens, there was a uh, debris, but it is very less. And also some few grooves we can see, few grooves we can see and uh, the, the debris particles also very less. At the same time, when you come into the colmoni 5, laser gladded specimens you can see there is very very few material loss there is no any grooves uh, there is no any uh, uh, materials uh, plucking the material pluckings and uh, there is no much uh, debris on the colmoni 5 worn out specimens this is uh, due to the higher hardness and uh, improved the wear resistance the material loss is very less on the colmoni 5 gladded specimens. At the same time, you can see the roughness measurement. The figure A is shows the uh, substrate specimens, and the figure C is uh, a inconal 625 specimen, and figure C uh, shows the colmoni 5 specimens. In this, the same way, the roughness also reflected here. The figure A shows the higher roughness uh, when compared with the other two uh, laser gladded specimens. 
<clears throat> yeah so now almost uh, we are in the conclusion section uh, in the laser processed specimens uh, we can say that the microstructure was uh, modified uh, hardness was improved when compared with the base materials and also the wear resistance and uh, uh, cof was reduced the wear resistance was increased and the reduced roughness uh, and also it uh, reduced the roughness on the worn out surface because the substrate specimens uh, shows the higher roughness uh, due to the higher material loss and higher uh, frictional force but when you compare it with uh, the laser processed specimens we can uh, we can achieve some uh, kind of advantages like we can improve the mechanical properties and we can improve the tribological properties as well as the hardness the wear uh, the same way we can improve the roughness also roughness of the components uh, thank you sir thank you uh, dr jay prakash so yeah. now the session is open for queries and doubt clarifications yeah anybody sir anybody having any doubts Atlas. Feel free to ask it. Online participants, if you have any doubts, you can unmute yourself and you can rise for question. Or else you can raise your hand. We will unmute you. You can have interaction with him. Otherwise, you can type your questionnaires in the chat box. We will uh, deliver it to uh, the uh, source persons. He will reply with an answer. Oh, tell me, sir. There are two questions as asked from the participant. Can we use laser surface texturing for drilling tools to drill a wood composite? Actually, uh, for what kind of applications, sir? Uh, this kind of uh, uh, the drilling tool, we we don't. Uh, use that kind of uh, texturing on the drilling. Uh, I don't know the application, uh, what kind of application they are using. They want to use it for uh, wood composite, they want to make a drill. Uh -huh. Okay. That purpose only they are asking whether surface texturing for drilling is needed or not. Drilling tool. I think it is not a recommended, sir, uh, because you are making the drilling. In the drilling, uh, the surface texturing is uh, completely different. It is not uh, recommended in this way. Okay. So yeah. uh, he is having another query. Yeah. So can we use laser surface aligning for mm. machining tools? If mm. yes, if your answer is yes, what would mm. be a aligning powder? Uh, yeah, we can do a kind of aligning process, uh, but especially. Uh, if your component, uh, if your component want to improve uh, some kind of a hardness, mechanical properties or a tribological properties, or uh, based on the application, the alloy powders may be different because there are plenty of alloy powders. We can take cobalt based alloys and also boron alloys. Uh, there are plenty of alloys. The alloy selections will be based on your applications whether it is uh, you are going to improve the mechanical properties or uh, erosion properties or corrosive properties, uh, based on the properties, the alloy powder selection will be different. Any other questions from online participants? You can raise your hand, we can unmute yourself. Anybody is raising hand? Anybody need, having any queries? Okay, so the candidate has replied with uh, thank you. And anybody, for offline participants, any queries? Laser cladding, laser metal processing. Fine. No problem. So check for the box and we'll post it. Please. No. Okay, so I think uh, there's no more queries, so we can close the uh, session. Oh, uh, okay, sir. Thank you for your presentation, sir. It's really wonderful. And we are also working with the uh, uh, cladding, hot basing, etc. Not with laser, with arc welding. Soon, mm -hmm. uh, if you are getting fun, we'll install laser source also. So when you are visiting yeah. India, you can come here and you can visit our uh, facilities, what we have developed. Yeah. 
you can yeah. give your suggestions if it is needed the upcoming yeah. days we'll also upgrade ourselves hope by yeah. next vacation if you are visiting we may have some equipment whether it's a arc welding or laser welding okay try to purchase okay. one uh, sir, participant have one more question ni kasna ange mic yeah good morning uh, this is uh, yeah good morning uh, actually uh, for doing this experiment uh, what is the cost uh, uh, it will takes we keep on cost you mm. not at the process cost process sir means, actually we don't have uh, equipments laser machines uh, uh, available okay. uh, in private uh, institutions yeah, we, we should uh, go for any companies or else uh, somewhere else we have to uh, do this experiment for doing yeah. this uh, of uh, 100 mm piece means oh, what would be the cost uh, it takes mm, sir actually uh, the cost uh, because uh, even uh, the cost is uh, next first uh, we are doing for a research purpose uh, in this way uh, we can minimize some kind of uh, process uh, which we can do by ourselves so for example the coating process we can uh, minimize we can do the pre-placed coating that's what i explained in detail we don't want to do this kind of coating in the companies but uh, when we go for uh, uh, laser processing uh, definitely uh, it will be little bit expensive uh, maybe for a uh, 100 mm uh, length uh, 50 mm length uh, uh, they may be charge like uh, 15000 20000 because I, i i paid before i know okay. some kind of uh, uh, things but yeah. they will ask like this 15k 20k Uh, that kind of uh, issues will be there but i think uh, in nit trichy we have the laser source uh, if you contact uh, professor uh, durai selvam from department of production engineering you can get this kind of facilities and also he can help you in that yeah. way yeah sure sir so yeah, uh, yes. one more question from the participant whether yeah. uh, coating process is possible for polymer composite laminate structure is it possible uh no sir uh, this is uh, completely uh, on the metals uh, polymers and all uh, we can't use uh, this high power laser uh, it is uh, completely uh, uh, not recommended for uh, non metals because oh. uh, we as as we are using as i mentioned uh, we are using 3 uh, kilowatt uh, laser power, uh, power. Oh. so at least uh, minimum 1 uh, kilowatt uh, or uh, 800 watts we will use so the polymer plastic and all it won't be uh, withstand with this temperature okay sir yeah okay, any questions finally no questions okay sir there is no question sir thanks so oh, much okay, again sir. for your wonderful lecture as well as yeah. uh, clarification on the queries and yeah. uh, thank you sir whenever you have uh, time when you are reaching india yes. please yeah, try yeah, to sure. visit our campus and give some sure sure sir. sure sir sure thank you sir thank you thanks. for the opportunity for providing this kind of uh, wonderful lecture <laughs> thank you for the opportunity sir thank you